What's up, everybody? It's DJ Greg here, another. Yep. <clears throat> and in this episode, I'm going to be um, talking about something a little different. As you can see, as I searched up on my phone, I'm going to be doing a video on the new solar system called Trappist. And if you guys don't know what this is, then this is the perfect episode for you. So, these, these seven planets are all Earth-sized, which is pretty crazy. And um, they're all orbiting one star. And um, I'll show you a picture of that on the screen right now. So, this is what one of the planets look like. And as you see on the picture coming up, this is what all of them look like. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and all those. And if you pause right here, you'll be able to see all of the planets and their facts. Even the days, the A, U, the R, I'm just reading them off. But you can see all those amazing facts about them. Everybody, now that you've seen all those pictures and stuff, now we're going to watch a quick little video. And then we'll have some facts about this amazing solar system of ours. And before the video starts, I will leave this in the description so you probably don't have to Imagine watch this. Imagine a place with not one, I'll not two, that. but seven Earth-sized planets all orbiting a single star. It's not just science fiction thanks to a new discovery by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. Trappist-1, an ultra-cool dwarf star just under 40 light years away, plays host to this incredible collection of planets. In 2016, astronomers using the Trappist telescope at the La Silla Observatory in Chile first identified three Earth-sized planets here. The discovery warranted extensive follow-up by Spitzer, whose infrared detectors are particularly sensitive to the cool glow of this tiny star. Spitzer devoted over 21 days of nearly continuous observations to Trappist-1, pausing only to send data back to Earth. It was looking for tiny dips in the star's brightness when the circling planets pass in front of the star or transit. From this extensive data set, astronomers confirmed two of the three previously reported planets and found the third was really three different ones, plus it discovered two more for a total of seven. The transits tell us a lot about these planets, including their size, orbital period, distance from the star, and for some of them, their approximate mass and density. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope followed up by studying the transits to look for the chemical fingerprint of hydrogen gas in the exoplanet atmospheres. While its search continues, none has been found yet, adding support to the idea these are all rocky terrestrial worlds. That makes this a planetary system that is both familiar yet exotic. It is likely most, if not all, of these planets perpetually keep one face pointed toward their star, a phenomenon called tidal locking. This would create large temperature gradients across their surfaces and offer the possibility that liquid water could exist on any of them under the right conditions. Moreover, if you could stand on the surface of one of these worlds and look up at your neighboring planets in the sky, they would at times appear larger than our moon looks to us. That's because Trappist-1 is only a little bigger than Jupiter, and the Trappist-1 planets orbit only a little farther apart than Jupiter's moons. Interplanetary trips here would be measured in days, not months or years like in our solar system. For now, we can only speculate what these exoplanets might be like, as we still know relatively little about them. Upcoming missions like the James Webb Space Telescope will study the Trappist-1 system in greater detail and uncover more clues about the atmospheres and compositions of these seven Earth-sized worlds. Alrighty, now that the video is done, let me just pause it. No one needs to see that. Um, that was pretty amazing. Um, you can see some facts from in there. Um, but... Now I just I got some notes um, just to recap what we did in this video and some things that were in the video. So let's get okay, right to just to recap what happened in this episode. I got some notes on the paper. So um, some of these I already did in the episode, but if you didn't see those in the episode, it was discovered by the Spitzer Space Telescope that NASA just created. I'm pretty sure. Um, it is 40 light years away, so I'm not exactly sure how in the world we're going to get there. But possibly, hopefully in my time, we could get there and discover. All these planets are rocky. Like, like, the outer planets in our solar system are rocky. Like, um, like the inner ones are, I forgot what they're called, but I'm pretty sure. Um, 
and none of them are found. They are all undiscovered planets, and the thumbnail in this video is probably a just just a picture. Um, so that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed um, learning all about Trappist, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace out.